the Galagichi Angel Network is staying strong. In this edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I talk with Elder Carly Town with the Galagichi Angel Network one on one. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Elder Carly Town, welcome back to the award winning Quentin's Close Ups. Well, Clinton, I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy to be here today. I appreciate it greatly. Obviously, you are with the Gullah Geechee uh, Angel Network, and I know there's a couple of great things happening with the organization as recent. Uh, you said this on your Facebook page, quote, Yenner Churn Gullah Geechee House is thankful to those who find it not robbery to get to the Gullah Geechee Angel Network programs. Describe the Gullah Geechee Angel Network these days. Okay, the Gullah Geechee Angel Network is a nonprofit 501c3 that um, preserve and promote Gullah Geechee culture. It goes from Cape Fair, North Carolina, all of the Jacksonville, Florida, and 30 to 30 miles inland. That's the Gullah Geechee Nation. But it also um, encompasses the diaspora. So we um, try to connect people not just in the 50, 50 states, but also we connect people in Africa, the Caribbean, and Europe because that's what time it is. <laughs> And who exactly are you connecting with right now in 2020? Well, right now we're just connecting with the diaspora. We have quite a few people all over. Um, we are connecting with um, East Africa. We also have some partners and people that we know in um, West Africa. So we are, we are actually connecting with all those through um, Zoom right now. Yes, ma'am. And let me reread what you just said on your Facebook page. You said this, Yenna Churn Galagichi House is thankful to those who find it not robbery to give to the Galagichi Angel Network programs. You talk about those programs. How much has giving increased during this COVID, pro uh, obviously, pandemic? Well, we have had some, not, a, well, we have had an increase in a way because it's more, people are more um, empathetic more compassionate so we are getting more support from a lot of people and we're thankful and grateful for those supporters because they realize that um, we are working in a marginalized community and that we need resources to do that so we are getting a little bit more help than we usually get you know so we're thankful and grateful to all our supporters everybody that support the Gullah Geechee Angel Network the Gullah Geechee Nation and um, we were actually given a uh, some funds from Queen Quet um, of the Gullah Geechee Land and Legacy. And we were so happy because that's going to help us to move forward and continue to build in our community. You talk about building the community. You obviously talk about how a marginalized community is and you need the resources. What more resources do you need right now? Right now, we can, we're looking at, um, we need human resources, you know, so we are working on getting more people to help us to build. Um, we also need finances. Um, we could use a, any donation would be um, thankful, grateful, because we are a nonprofit, so you can write it off. And it is for a great cause because we are trying to let people know that the kingdom is within, that you can actually do what you got to do, just need to work hard and, and, and get people of like minds and just build because that's what time it is. You know, I keep saying that's what time it is. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And what, where are these like-minded people who can relate to the kingdom? Well, there are a lot of like-minded people in the community because they're the ones being impacted. But there are a lot of people around the world that understand that we must be able to continue to hold on to who we are. And our culture is very important. And so... We have people all over that realize that we need to continue to work to keep our land, to keep our waterways clean, to just keep moving forward so that we will be stewards of the land and the water so that we can continue to live on our land. Now, who are you guys? Who are? Well, the Gullah Geechee Angel Network is actually local people, just people that are sympathetic toward the cause of humanity, of, of knowing that people need to be um, appreciated and validated. So these are an array of different people. I work see with Queen Quet. She's chiefess of the Gullah Geechee Nation, right. and she has done a lot for Gullah Geechee by going around talking about the waters and talking about, you know, different things that we need to do to hold on to the land. So those are some of the people, but it's everybody. The Gullah Geechis are, uh, are, are everybody who is Gullah Geechee. Actually, the Gullah Geechis came from um, 
parts of Africa, from Senegambia all the way down to Angola. Yeah. So those are the Gullah Geechee, those are descendants. We are descendants of that West African culture. So we have the highest retention of African tradition in America. And so we still hold them upon them right okay. now. Right now. And what's that retention rate in your mind? Well, I think the retention rate, I can't really give a, a, a number, but the retention rate is really, um, it's about the language. We still hold on to our language, right? Um, we still have, we still cook the, some of the same foods that they cook in Africa. Um, in Africa, they, in West Africa, especially in Ghana, they might call it jollof, right. and we call it red rice. Right. Okra. I mean, the okra came from Africa. So those things, we're still here in the low, in the low country, like they say, but in the Gullah Geechee Nation, still doing what we used to do in Africa. Now, which one of those foods describe you, Elder? I think the, um, the okra. I think it's the okra because, you know, it's, it's about the green. It's about the land. It's about uh, growing. It's about building. And so okra is green and long and inside these little pods. And those are the seeds that we plant, you know, the seeds in the minds of the young people so that they can know who they are and, and where, you know, what they need to do in their community. And I'm, I want to get back to the land and just, well, let me get to it right now. What is left as far as land in the Gullah Geechee community? What is left? We have, we've lost a lot of land. But we also have been able to retain a lot of land. So we have a, a pretty good retention, but there's still a lot of people that will need help with taxes because taxes is one of the issues that comes up. And so there has been a great loss because of that, because of, you know, people leaving home too and, and, and not coming back to their um, communities. But right now we are in a process of, we are thinking, we are pessimistic, we are optimistic that we will continue to hold on to the land because we're going to help people. There's different organizations that are actually helping people to hold on to the land. They're actually giving donation to those people that need money to pay their taxes. Now, how much is the average tax for land right now in those particular areas? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Um, we now are in charge of my mom's house because she made her transition in December of last year. And her taxes were like $112 when she was living. And now it's $1,000. So if you don't have the funds to do that, you could possibly end up losing the land. So that's why families have to come together and make sure that they find out what they need to pay in order to hold on to the land. So it increases. I, I don't know why it increased that much this year, but I, I plan to check into it. And what do you hope people will check into when it, ta when it comes to taxes? What was the question again? Yes, ma'am. What do you hope people, what else would you, do you hope people will check into when it comes to taxes? What else do I, okay. Well, when it comes to taxes, number one, make sure that you look at your taxes and see how much it is. Um, if you can't, you know, if you can't, find um, how much it is, you can always go on, on online and check and they can tell you how much it is online. But make sure you have, if you're an older person, make sure you have somebody younger who understand the system and who would actually take the opportunity to check the taxes for you and make sure that you pay it on time. Because if you don't, you end up in a situation. What is the state of that system? What is the state of that system? Well, the system is what it is. It's a system that's been in place for a long time. But I think that we as uh, people who are like the, not the leaders, but the people who are leaders need to let the people know how to keep their tax, you know, taxes, how to pay their taxes, how to make sure they keep their land because you can have like a LLC right. if you're a family to make sure that you you know, work together and, and get all the money you need for the taxes and pay it. Yes, ma'am. Now, since that increase in some of those taxes, how many more homes or land have been lost? Well, it's been quite a few has been lost. You know, I'm from Union Hike and right. I see, I see where um, there is a lot of land that has been lost. Hmm. And also I see where there's still a lot of land to hold on to. So, you know, I'm kind of like the person that let's see what we can do. Let's not talk about the losses. Let's make sure we don't lose anymore. So with that in mind, we try to make sure people know that 
you are you are loved your land is a historical place and you must keep this because your ancestors they left you as steward of your land so you must make sure that you hold on to it. There may be some situation where you cannot hold on to it, but if there's a situation where you can, you must do so. Yes, ma'am. And I, I, I hate to ask this question, uh, but <laughs> what much? How much land is left in these areas in the Gullah community? Well, I don't have the I don't have the exact amount that's left because you know, like I said, the Gullah Geechee nation goes from Cape Fair, North Carolina, all the way to Jacksonville, Florida, 30, 35 miles in. So along that coast, we have lost land along that coast, but I can't tell you an exact amount. But you have the same situation all the way down. People, you know, trying to hold on, people working to make sure that they know what the taxes are, people um, trying to find systems that they can pay part of it and don't have to pay the whole thing at one time. Yes, ma'am. Let me turn over to November 21st. I know that you will have uh, a November 21st symposium on health and nutrition. It will focus on the health of our community. We will get special attention to men in our community, you said. What is the state of men's health in the black community? Um, from my focus, I've seen where a lot of, there's a lot of issues in the black community and the Gullah Geechee community with health anyway. But I see that men have a tendency not to talk about it. Start going to someone who's going to come and talk to them, a um, young man named Talim, and he's going to come and talk to them about health and how to pay more attention to their health. There is an issue in our community with high blood pressure. I see people walking, you know, um, some people don't you know, walking with canes and stuff like that because the uh, the diabetes and stuff like that. So I see that. I mean, it's just a visual thing for me. I can feel it. And I just felt that we needed to do more for the men at this time. Why are men silent when it comes to their health? That's a good question. I don't know. I think it's because, you know, we were men were raised to be macho, to be um, strong, to make sure that they took care of the family. And I think that that's part of the psyche that they have to be strong and they don't want to show that side of them that may have some issues going on. Now, how can they continue to do that, but also be aware and let other people know about their health? Yeah. Um, how can they? Well, you know, it takes a, uh, what do they say? It takes a village to raise a child. And I think not that men are children, but I think that we need to pay attention to our community and the men and the women and the children in it. But this time here is just a time that I decided that, hey, I want to do something to make sure that our community, the kingdom within, the kings within are doing, are feeling validated. Do men feel validated in the black community? I, I can't answer that because I'm not a man, but I don't know. But anybody, everybody wants to be validated. That's just, that's just human nature. Everybody wants to be validated. So I would think that anybody would want to be validated, like I said earlier. Yes, ma'am. And you also said this on your Facebook page, too, in relation to that, as Dr. O would say, stay woke. How is the Gullah Geechee Angel Network staying woke after Dr. O's passing? Well, we're staying woke by continuing to do the work that he was doing. Um, Dr. O, I, I really give honor to the work that he has done. And I know that we must continue to do this work because he did a lot. And I want to make sure that I do my part and because we all come to a point where we will not be able to do what we are put here to do. So I just want to make sure that the Gullah Geechee Angel Network and its board member continue the work. And the work is, is making making the community much better because as you see as you've seen dr o's work right. it really made an impact on everybody so that's what we want to continue to do and what's keeping you awake about voting in 2020 what's keeping me awake <laughs> well um the issues that we deal with in our community every day is is of of interest to me and i'm quite sure um the vote that we cast will make sure uh, is, is a way to say, I am interested in my community and I want to see things happen better for my community. What do you want to see better in the community when it comes to voting? 
Well, I want to. I would. I would like to see um, some of the things that the, the 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 community has not to me needs to be um, appreciated. And 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 when I say appreciated, it needs to be recognized. It needs to have resources. You know, financial resources. Um, we need to empower people by, uh, like I say, by the Gullah Geechee culture. I would like to see more people understand about the culture and how important it has been and it is to Charleston, North Charleston, to, to the Gullah Geechee Nation. Yes, ma'am. Um, how can the community be appreciated when there's so much voter suppression and according to so many people? Well, we have to get um, beyond the voter suppression. Um, and we just have to, to look, we have to look within, you know, but sometimes we just got to look within ourselves and, you know, God gave us the right to do things. So we have to just go do what, I, what we need to do for our communities. Sometimes we can't wait on, on, on somebody else to do it. I don't care who it is. We have to take that initiative within and do the work with thus says the Lord. Where do you start? You could start right with your own self. Start working within yourself and then start asking, what can I do? What is my purpose? And the answers will come. Meditate and pray and everything you need to know will come to you. What is your purpose in this community? My purpose is to make sure that I serve God, number one, honor my ancestors, and take care of the family. And the family is extended beyond my personal family, my son, my grandkids. It goes to the community. It's to, to make sure that people really realize who they really are and the power that we do have. And that don't allow people to take your power away from you. Because we are powerful human beings. We are really powerful. God gave us everything. And how do you hold on to your power? I hold on to my power by just what I said earlier. I do a lot of prayers. I do a lot of meditation. And I try to always, my favorite book that was given to me when I was a young girl was The Art of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. My uncle Bougie gave me that when I was like 10 years old. And I always held on to those tenets. I always held on to think positive, to make sure that I, 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 appreciate people to make sure that I treat people the way I would want to be treated. Also, the Bible was very important too. Yeah, that's always number one. And yes. You talk about obviously, you know, the culture, the Gullah Geechee culture. What is the thinking of the culture right now in 2020? The thinking of the culture is the same thing that um, we all want to do is to have a good life, to continue to hold on to what we have in our community, our land, to continue to educate and empower people, to be good stewards of the waterways, of the land, and of the people, and to make sure that we do all that we can to, to help people to understand that we are Gullah Geechee anointed people. Anointed people. And what are the people saying about the waterways? Well, there's a lot of issues that, you know, has gone on with the waterways because of you know, the stewards that we, the stewards did not take care of it like we should. And we all, you know, could say we are stewards. And so we just have to continue to do what we can do to make sure that we continue to um, improve on being the stewards of the land, of the nation, and the things that are of God. And what can you do right now, Elder? Well, what can you do right now? You could just you could just actually clean the trash up in your yards, you know, and make sure you have it in a, a decent place. You could actually, because that causes pollution and stuff like that. You could make sure that you don't pollute the waters. You know, you can make sure that you, you know, just just make sure that you take care of those little small things like that. And, and that's that's a start. That's a start. There are other people doing bigger things. Um, Queen Quet is doing a lot with um, the waterways, you know, talking about the waterways and how we can protect it. And, and it's just so much. Sometimes you could just pick up a book, just pick up a book that focuses on the subject that you're looking to, to know about and read that book. And it'll give you some information on more things that you could do 
to make sure that you are good stewards of the land. Now, what book have you picked up lately to learn more about the waterways? Well, um, one of the books that I have picked up recently is just uh, one of the things that I picked up recently was just the Bible. I just read the Bible, you know, and it tells me that's why I use the word good steward. We good steward. We supposed to be, we, he left us in charge. So that's one of the ways, like I say, go back within and find out what you need to do to help keep the land and the waterways. Now, when you go back within and look around, what did the stewards didn't do to protect the waterways in the, in the beginning? Well, like I said early, we didn't, we didn't, um, take care of the waterways caused by pollution, you know, throwing um, on the beaches, um, putting trash there, um, you know, like I say, putting trash, dropping trash in your communities and, and just some of those simple things that we take for granted are some of the things that have caused some of the greater problems in our communities and the nation. And the nation. Finding Spaces. You posted this on your Facebook page called Finding Spaces That Celebrate Our History, Art and Legacy. And you mentioned the Black Dog Culture Center in Lithonia, Georgia, outside of Atlanta. You said it is inspiring, engaging, and empowering. I recommend this space, you said. Put it on your list of a place to visit. But let me ask you this, Elder. What spaces in Charleston are finding, or you, you can actually find to celebrate Black history, art, and obviously its legacy? Well, um, one of the places that I'm f focusing on now, and I can't wait till it opens, is the um, International African American Museum. Okay. That's going to be a space. But right now, um, the Avery um, Research Center is, is another space. Um, and we're trying to, to get a space that we and, and the communities that you can come together and actually talk about your culture and learn about your culture and also to, to learn about each other. Just have a space to dialogue about the, what we can do about those things you asked me about earlier, the waterways and stuff like that. So Yenna Churn House is one of those spaces that we really are trying to do that. It's a house. So we actually, gonna, it's going to be like a house. One time when I was a young girl, they had a place called the Echo House mm. where people would come and do sewing and do different things. But we're going to just focus on technology because a lot of our stuff will be done through Zoom and stuff like that. But in the meantime, we are using that space now to gather people. That's where we're going to have this November 21st event. It's going to be at Yenna Churn Yard because we got we to gotta respect the um, social distancing and we want everybody to wear their masks and we'll have somebody to monitor the people. We're not going to have a large crowd. We just going to, we want to bless at least 15 men in the community or outside the community with uh, this, these conversation about health, a little bit of food, a little bit, a little bit of music, and perhaps a little bit of Reiki or we don't know yet, but we're going to have some great things for those men in the community. But the women must come too because we're all part of it and the children because this is your deterrent house. But what a better way to serve than to start with the head, the man. As a matter of fact, the house is being renovated on Forest Avenue in the Union Heights, the hike area of North Charleston. Why Union Heights? Why the Union Churn House? Well, Union Heights is where I was born and raised. And the reason it is Yenna Churn House, Yenna Churn mean you children. Right. That's, that's Gullah Geechee for that. Um, I always loved my community, but when I was younger, I, I thought that I needed to go away in order to grow. Well, I did grow. I did grow. But when I came back to visit my mom, which was just about every day, I would see things that I thought that needed to be there. And I always say, if you see something that needs to be done, go ahead and do it. And I was like, well, nobody knows. I asked people, I took a, you know, I asked people, what do you know about your Gullah Geechee culture? And they would be like, what? No. So I said, these people need to know about this rich culture that everybody else is coming here to see. I say, people coming here to see who you are and you saying who that. And I said, that's you. So I decided that we needed to find a way to bring that culture into the community, into the community. And so that's how we got to that point. We have a board member and our board member agreed. We agreed. Um, Elder Lisa Wineglass Smalls yes. is on the board. Um, Great lady. Yes. Talia um, Augustine. We, we're getting some new board members. And so we're working on making sure that people know that we 
have this rich culture and not just the people that's coming here, but the people that lives here. How has Union Heights grown over the years? It has grown. And I, I, I'm going to put stick a pen right there. It has grown in a direction that's a little different than I thought it would grow. Um, there is some new construction going on there. Yeah. Um, that's why I feel that even though there's new construction going, I still think there's room for renovation because the houses, some of the houses on the hike is like from, they were built in 1945. Okay. And the house that we uh, we have, Yenna Charon House, yes. was built in 1945. Wow. Um, and so, but we still can take those houses and renovate it. Because sure. we live in a society where we throw away a lot of stuff. Right. But I feel that we don't need to throw away everything because we won't have some of that history. So that's why we are working to make sure that Yenna Charon House is visible and that it's, it's serving the people. That's what it is, serving the people. Now, what exactly needs to be at Union in Union Heights right now? What happened? There is a lot of things that we have there. Um, we have some organizations that are working. Um, we got LAMSI. We have the Union Night Council. They're working on projects, but it, some of the projects that they're working on is still in progress. But they have done a lot to help us stay where we are now. But we are the Union Churn House and the Gullah Geechee Angel Network wants to move a little further out to make sure that we continue to build and to um, make sure that we continue to have a viable, um, rich community because it's only 15 minutes away from the, from the city of Charleston. Right. So it's a very, very, um, it's, it's, a, it's an exciting place to be. I mean, you see, when you come to the hike, you see people right. riding their bicycle right. and you got fruit trees. It's right. wonderful. It's yeah. It's a blessing. Yes, indeed. And I know something has a concern to a lot of those people over there because I see it every weekend when I'm over there. But obviously, the new uh, Hugh Leatherman Turner Mall is going to come and do that area. How concerned are you guys about that right now? Right now, if, I, I, I'm not really concerned about any of that. I'm just going to continue to to build and to uh, make sure that the presence that we need to have in the community as far as Gullah Geechee culture is there. Everything else, we're just going to go, um, just take it, take a little bit at a time. We just watch and see, watch as well as pray. Now, you talked earlier about the culture, and you talked about it actually a lot throughout this particular interview, but how does your culture, the Gullah Geechee culture, meet technology? Oh, we have a program called Tech Up Step Up. Um, and so with Tech Up Step Up, we have the, um, it's an intergenerational program where the elders come and learn um, technology because zoom has become the the thing right. and if we don't know how to use that we will probably be disconnected and then uh, the young the elders come and learn technology the young people come in and, and help us with technology and then the elders will also teach them about their Gullah Geechee culture yes, so it's an exchange within the uh, generations culture and technology meets together and, and, and create a great tool for the community to connect, especially in this time where we have COVID. Um, this is a way that we can connect. Now, what other tools do you need to actually connect? What other tools we need to connect? You mean as far as the Gullah Geechee? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, some of the other tools that, you know, there's a lot in the communities that do not have, um, some of them don't even have phones. Some of them don't even have um, laptops, right. you know. So those are the things that need to be um, ac accessible to the communities, to these marginalized communities, because if not, they will be left out. You know, they will be left out. Yes, ma'am. You talked earlier about, obviously, what you see when it comes to the Hugh Leatherman Terminal. How do you watch and see gentrification and how do you slow that down in your love Unite, Union Heights neighborhood? That's one of the things that, you know, um, it's hard, it's hard to say, how do you slow it down? You know, you don't, there is a way that you need to look at things and say, how do I do, do better? How do I get the community to do better with what we have? We may not be able to slow down anything, but we sure can continue to take care of what we already have because those things are ours. I mean, my mother lived in her house for at least a hundred, she was 93 when she died. Oh. But her, her dad built the house. 
So that house is over 100 years old. Right. Do I want to see somebody come and buy it? No. So we will have to continue to take care of it and make sure that whatever is happening, that we have some protection. But Union Hike has a his, is a historical community. Yes. It, it is a historical community. So um, and we got a plaque for that. Yes. You know, so that's one of the one of the things that we probably can use as a tool to make sure that those hundred year old houses stay where they are, you know, as long as they are presentable, yes, you know, as far as people can still live in them. Yes, ma'am. And you talk about that house. Let me ask you this. When you do walk into the house, what would you be welcome with? When you do welcome, welcome into the house, what will you be welcome with? It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. We will be welcomed with love, mm. peace, and joy, self-control, the fruit of the spirit. That's one of the things. So this is a spiritual, very spiritual um, work that we are doing, and it's working. Working. Now, I know you have a love and passion for the Union Heights neighborhood. <laughs> and in order for you to keep that intact, how high will your voice go so that it can reach the state lawmakers, federal lawmakers, and local lawmakers to keep gentrification from expanding um that's a good question i will continue to speak what i speak but i will continue to do i am one of those persons that i think that i need to do uh you lead by example and so there will be opportunities there have been opportunities for us to speak to law to lawmakers and legislators but we just do the work I'm not, I, we just continue to do the work. And, you know, I believe that those that can see will see. Those that will, who could hear will hear. And how much more work do you have to do, Ms. Elder? <laughs> I will work and tell. I will work and tell. I don't know. You just do the work. I mean, you just continue to do the work. And you get people with like minds to help you. There's a, a lot of people out there. We have uh, supporters that who are supporting our efforts, who will continue to support our efforts. So we just have to continue to do the work. And I think, you know, the things that we need, the resources and the tools will come as long as you're doing the work. Elder Carly Town, thank you so much for your time. And again, <laughs> welcome back to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you, Quentin. Peace and blessing. Stay strong. And I love you. Peace. Likewise.